So you'd like to buy a drone. Or you'd like to buy a drone for someone else. And you're not sure which one to get. And you don't know how much you should spend. It's not an easy area of technology to get into when you're coming in cold with no prior knowledge. That's for sure. But I'm happy to break it all down for you. Give you some clear purchasing recommendations. And provide a little introduction to the world of drones. Alright, let's do this. There are several criteria to consider when buying a drone and it's helpful to understand them to assist in the purchasing process. The important thing to establish before you buy a drone for yourself or someone else is what they want to use it for. Well, flying, duh. Yes, obviously flying, but drones lend themselves to various purposes and you need to define those in order to get the right drone. For example, is the drone just for the fun of flying? Is the drone for taking with you when you travel to document your journeys? Do you want to use it for professional purposes such as real estate? When you use it for fishing? Are you a filmmaker or an aspiring filmmaker? Do you want a drone that ticks all of those boxes? How important to you is the drone's portability? Do you need something that will fit in a small day bag and which doesn't weigh much? Are you happy to putt with a bit more weight for the sake of a better camera or performance in the wind? Or is size irrelevant to you? and you just want the best drone for your price range. While the quality of video on most drones these days is uniformly excellent, there are of course big differences between the different models. So how important is the video or photo quality to you? Will you only be sharing on social media? Or will you be uploading to YouTube? Will you need professional video capabilities? Do you want video footage that's ready to go straight off the SD card? Or do you want something you can edit to look a specific way? Quite often the cost of a drone dictates the outcomes in all those prior criteria. If you can only afford a specific amount, then you may have to forego some of the features you'd like to have had. You also need to consider replacement costs or insurance, because while drones get better every year, there's always a risk with sending an electronic device up into the sky and controlling it remotely. The drone you end up getting may well be influenced by the country you live in. This is because every country has their own regulations and what is permissible in one might be illegal in another. For instance, here in Australia, it's pointless having an FPV drone because it's illegal to fly them in public. You'll also find that the regulatory side of drone use varies from country to country and a drone that you can fly for free in one might cost money in licensing or registration in another. Once you've got a firm handle on all those other criteria, then you can consider the value add or nice to have features on a drone. Would you like one that can track you autonomously through a woodland full of spindly little branches? Is it important to have a tele lens on it? so you can get closer to the action. Is a long battery life important? Hopefully you now have a clearer understanding of what you want to get out of your drone. With that in mind, I put together seven use cases along with a recommended drone. Use these use cases to make your purchasing decision, but remember to weigh them against the criteria we outlined. Do you poop in a bucket and shower at the gym? in the name of living that van life. Documenting your travels lends itself well to a drone, and there's a couple of good choices for someone in this situation. The Mini 3 Pro is a high quality, but extremely portable, sub 250 gram drone that you can launch and land from the palm of your hand. That size means it will take up very little of that precious space in your van, and could even be stored in the glove box. The size also means that there are far fewer regulations, and it's possible to fly more often in more places than heavier and bulkier drones. Video and photo quality is top notch with 4K HDR, a gradable video codec so you can get your footage looking the way you want, and an active track system that you can use to film your van from the air, even if you're a solo van lifer. My follow-up choice would be the new DJI Air 3. This is a mid-tier drone that weighs three times as much as the Mini 3 Pro, but it does have a 70mm medium tele lens that is perfect for beautiful aerial van tracking shots. When it comes to hiking or backpacking, 
The number one criteria to consider is weight, closely followed by size. As someone who loved a suitcase-sized Phantom 4 drone through national parks, I can tell you that the small foldable drones are an incredible innovation. For anyone living outside the US, my recommendations would be one of the drones in the DJI Mini range, preferably the Mini 3 Pro. These drones are small enough to fit in your pocket, which means they're much more convenient to deploy, and you're therefore far more likely to actually use one out in the backcountry. If you do live in the US, then you should consider the Autel Nano range of drones, which sit in the same pocketable sub 250 gram class and have all the same bells and whistles as the DJI drones. The physical dimensions of a drone become less important when image quality is your most important criteria. Photographers are used to carrying heavy camera equipment, and so it makes sense that they'd also be happy to carry a heavier or bulkier drone in the name of that image quality. As to which drone you get, that depends on your budget. If you're looking to spend about as much as you would on a mirrorless camera and a good lens, then the Mavic 3 Pro or Classic are great options. If you're happy to use a traditional wide-angle lens, then the Mavic 3 Classic is your go-to with its Hasselblad camera and 20 megapixel sensor. If you'd like a bit more flexibility, then look at the Air 3, which has similar flight time and obstacle avoidance technology, along with a secondary 70mm medium tele camera. If you want the very best image quality, then you'll need to invest in a DJI Inspire 3 with a Zenmuse X9 interchangeable lens camera, which can shoot in 8K ProRes RAW video, and 35mm full-frame photographs. You may have to remortgage the house though, because prices start at 20,000 Australian dollars, that's 16 and a half US. If you're just looking for a bit of fun at the weekends, or perhaps photographing or videoing occasional family events, then don't be tempted to spend big. The best choice for the weekend warrior would be something like the DJI Mini 3, which costs 749 Australian, or 469 US dollars. Punches above its weight with a 4K HDR video mode that can shoot great footage and even the most difficult lights. It also has a true vertical shooting mode that turns the camera sideways for shooting portrait shots or video intended for social media. It's a real beginner friendly drone with a heap of automated modes that can take the hassle out of doing clever looking video shots. Alternatively, consider the DJI Air 2S, which has just been replaced with the Air 3, but should still be available for a while yet, and has had its price cut to 1100 Australian or 799 US dollars. The Air 2S has an amazing 5.4K sensor, 12 km transmission range, and four direction obstacle sensing. If you like nothing better than playing a game of dare with gravity and get your kicks from throwing yourself off or down mountains, then you need a drone that can look after itself. And six months ago, I'd have told you that one of Skydio's drones was a great choice because they have far and away the best collision detection systems in the business. But unfortunately, they've just announced that they're ditching their entire consumer drone range. If you're happy knowing there won't be much company support, I'd still recommend a Skydio 2 for someone like a downhill mountain biker. So since the key feature required for the shooting aerial footage of action sports is speed and obstacle avoidance, that gives us two solid choices, the new DJI Air 3, or if you want better video quality, the Mavic 3 Classic. Both of these have APAS, DJI's 360 degree obstacle avoidance feature, and while they're not as sophisticated at avoiding stuff as the Skydio drones, they're gonna work well in all but the trickiest of spindly twig forests. You don't have to look very hard to find blog posts or YouTube videos from people claiming to make serious bank from their drones. But of course, like all money-making opportunities, it's never that easy. However, if you've decided that flying a drone could be a way for you to earn a bit of rainy day money, then you'll need a drone that is an all-rounder. That choice of drone comes down to how much you're prepared to invest in the side hustle. Do remember though, there is a side hustle, and I'd strongly advise against going all-in on something like a DJI Inspire. I think the best all-round drone, perfect for flying for fun or for money, is the Mavic 3 Classic with the DJI RC controller. This drone represents excellent value for money. It has a beautiful large micro four-thirds sensor 
attached to a Hasselblad camera. It can shoot in 5.1K at 50 FPS and can shoot in a flat color profile D-Log format so you can professionally grade your footage to look precisely the way you want. An alternative would be something like the Air 3, which is a lot cheaper, but that sensor is nowhere near as good. If you live in the States, you can also consider the Auto Evo 2 series, which has an 8K Sony sensor, 360 degree obstacle avoidance, and 40 minutes of flight time. Up until now, you'll have noticed that most of my recommendations have been for DJI drones. And that's because when it comes to consumer quadcopters, they're pretty much the only game in town. However, if you want to fly a drone for the thrill of flying, and you'd like to take on a hobby that requires dedication and practice, and which encourages an interest in electronics, then you should look at an FPV drone. You can build these from scratch using guides you'll find freely available online. But a good option for newbies is to buy a ready-made FPV drone, such as iFlight's Nazgul series. You can buy iFlight's drones either on their own or in a bundle with an FPV headset. They're much more reasonably priced than DJI's drones, but do remember that you'll need an action cam such as a GoPro if you want to film your FPV flights. If you'd like to dip a toe in the FPV world, then consider getting a baby FPV drone known as a CineWhoop and using that to learn on. You can pick up something like the Cetus FPV for just a couple of hundred bucks. By way of an alternative, DJI small FPV, the Avanza, is a popular choice, but it's also considerably more expensive than the traditional FPV drone and doesn't have much in the way of street cred. Owning a drone can be a rewarding hobby, and the drone itself can be both a recreational and a practical or business tool. As the technology and reliability has improved year after year, it's become quite hard to buy a bad drone as long as you stick to familiar brands such as DJI and Autel. You will see adverts for 4K drones on TikTok and Facebook, which look very similar to DJI drones and cost a tenth of the price. But don't be tempted. If it looks too good to be true, then it is. At least cheap drones are hard to control, easy to break, and prone to fly away. If you only want to spend a couple hundred bucks, then either get a DJI Mini 2 SE at 600 Australian dollars or the Cetus FPV Silly Whoop I mentioned earlier. The first time you fly your new drone, I strongly suggest you go to a nice, quiet, wide open area such as a local park or sports field and get through your first few nervous flights there. But consumer drones are ludicrously easy to fly. Literally anyone can do it, so don't stress too much about it. Hopefully this little video has been of some help to you. If it has, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more drone photography and video related content from me. Till the next time guys, ta-ta.